Now I'm going to um, describe more about law, the grace of God and the law of God and apply it to teaching. Nataka kuendelea kufafanua zaidi kuhusu neema ya Mungu na sheria ya Mungu na pia ni mafundisheni jinsi ya kuweka mambo haya katika mazoezi. It's very important to understand that we need both God's grace and God's law. I'm just saying the motivation comes mainly from the grace of God. And I want to say that God's law also gives us motivation. Let me explain this. For instance, to pray to God. Kwa motivation to pray to God. Kwa mfano, mungu ili the motivation from the grace is because God is full of blessings for us. Na sasa kuchochewa kunako tokana na ema kutasema kwamba mungu kwa sababu natubariki He wants to bless each person Unataka kubariki kila mmoja And each person who has a heart of hunger for him Na kila mmoja atakuwa na shauku ama atakuwa na tamanio na kupokea kutoka kwa mungu And trust in Jesus' blessings Ni naamini katika baraka za Kristo Yesu and then reach out to him and pray to him. Na sasa unamfikia kabisa unapomuomba. God will bless them. Mungu atabariki watu hao. So this is the motivation of grace. Yaani hapa umechochewa kutokana na neema. We pray because God has so many blessings for us. Tunaomba kwa sababu Mungu anazo baraka nyingi kwetu sisi. He also wants to use our life to a higher level. Na anataka kusongesha maisha yetu katika viwango vya juu. The more we pray to him, the more we are connected to him. Tunapoendelea kumuomba Mungu ndivyo tunavyoendelea kuunganika pamoja naye. And we all will have strength. Na tutajazwa na nguvu. And spiritual gifts. Na tutapokea hata vipawa vya kiroho. And opportunities to serve God. Na hata tutapewa nafasi ya kutumikia Mungu. Now we also need the motivation of the law which is a negative from a negative perspective. We need to tell people if they don't pray then they are like what Jesus said in uh, in John chapter 15 watakuwa kama vile Yesu aliposema katika kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 15 the branch that does not stay in the vine will be like a branch cut off and thrown out ya kwamba lile tawi ambalo haliwezi likazaa matunda litakatwa na litupwe it will wither na litakauka and thrown into the fire na likisha kauka litatupwa kwenye so that means Anyone who does not pray at all, inamana kuamba mutoe yote amai hawezi kuomba. He will lose the connection with God. Atapoteza ule munga ni kwa kena mungu. He can lose salvation. Na anaweza kupoteza wakuf. Now this is the motivation from the law. Yani hapa kuna chochewa kutokana na sheria. We need that too. Tunaitaji yupiya. We need to tell people. If they don't pray, kama hawawezi kuomba, they can lose a relationship with God. Wanaweza kupoteza uhusiano wao na Mungu. They can lose the strength from God. Wanaweza kupoteza nguvu za Mungu. And they can lose salvation. Na wanaweza kupoteza wokovu. But this is motivation from the negative side. Lakini sasa hapo ni kutochewa kunaotokana na sehemu kinyume. If you don't pray, that will happen to you. Ya kwamba usipo omba kuna mambo fulani yatakayo kufanyikia Now for a Christian who loves the Lord Kwa mkristo anayo mpenda buwana The main motivation is made from his love Yeye kuchoche waku wake kuna tokana na upendo He loves us and wants to bless us Anatupenda na pia anatubariki Now for me when I pray I don't think If I don't pray I'll lose my salvation I don't think of that Yeye wakati anapo omba haombi na kufikiria kwamba anaweza kupoteza wakofu wake. Because I have the motivation to love God and pray to Him. Kwa sababu yeye amepisha kuchochewa kumuomba mungu. The motivation to tell people that if they, you know, if they don't pray they can lose salvation is for Christian 
Who cannot appreciate God's love yet? Aha, mtu yule anayeweza kuchochewa na sheria ni yule mtu ambaye hajamwamini kabisa kabisa katika Mungu. Now, do you understand this part? For a mature, steady Christian, the motivation would mainly come from the love of God and His grace. Kwa yule mkristo ambaye ni mkomavu katika wokovu, kuchochea kwake kuna tokana na upendo wa Mungu. And then, about the area of sin. Na sasa sehemu ile ya dhambi. What is my motivation not to sin? Ni nini ambacho kimenichochea ili nisije nikatenda dhambi? From the perspective of grace would be like this. Kutokana mtazamo wa neema yatakuwa hivi. Now what I want to say this too. This is very important teaching. Kile ambacho nataka kuzungumza ni kwamba hili fundisho ni fundisho muhimu zaidi. So I hope you write it down and try to remember. Kwa hivyo naamini utaandika chini na utajaribu kuweka katika utakumbuka. And also if you have WhatsApp, you know, and YouTube you can see my videos you look for Pastor Yip, YIP. Na kama unaweza kuwa katika mtandao unatumika katika WhatsApp ama unatumika katika YouTube unaweza kuandika majina yake Pastor Yip alafu utaona video zake nyingi. Na kama ungelipenda kujiunga naye katika WhatsApp unaweza kumwambia alafu akupe namba ya WhatsApp. On Facebook is up, you know, then you can watch it tonight already when you go home. Aha, na haya mambo ambayo tunafundisha hapa kama unaweza kuwa na na bundles unaweza kutazama kwenye Facebook kutoka hapa iko kwenye mtandao. You can see my ministry in different countries. Unaweza kuona akifanya huduma kwenye mataifa tofauti. A lot of my videos are in Chinese. Na video ya zake nyingi ziko katika lugha ya Kichina. But there are many in English too. Lakini pia za Kizungu, za Kiingereza ziko nyingi. And many have interpretation in Kiswahili. Na zingine tumejaribu kusiwe kuzifafanua kuzitafsiri katika Kiswahili. Now, now I talk about the motivation not to sin. Sasa nataka kuzungumza jinsi mtu anavyoweza kuchochewa ili usitende dhambi. The motivation from the grace of God is like this. Sasa kuchochewa kutoka katika neema ya Bwana kunakuwa hivi. God loves us very much. Mungu anatupenda zaidi. He has a lot of blessings for us. Anazo baraka nyingi kwetu sisi. And he wants to have a close relationship with us. Na angalitaka kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na sisi. But we need to know that God is a holy God. Lakini yafaa tuelewe kwamba Mungu ni Mungu mtakatifu zaidi. When we stay in sin, tunapodumu katika dhambi, the sins will block the relationship with God. Dhambi zitaharibu uhusiano wetu na Mungu. And block the blessings from God. Na dhambi zitazuia zile baraka za Mungu. And block his presence. Na dhambi pia zitazuia uwepo wa Mungu. So for me, I'm motivated to follow God's perfect plan for my life. Kwa hivyo mimi nimechochewa kufuata mpango kabambe wa Mungu katika maisha yangu. Because I know that God's plan is the best, is better than any human plan. Kwa sababu najua mpango wa Mungu ndio mwema zaidi kushinda mipango zingine zote za kibinadamu. His plan is beautiful before beyond imagination ni mpango wa Mungu unavutia ni wa thamani zaidi hata kushinda kitu tunavyowazia when we enter God's plan your life will go higher and higher unapoingia katika mpango wa Mungu maisha yako yataenda juu na juu zaidi like now God has given me many good teachings to spread to people sasa sahihi Mungu amenipa mafundisho mema ili akaweze kuwasaidia watu and he has opened the door away for me to go to different countries na Mungu amemfungulia huyu baba kwenda katika mataifa tofauti kuhubiri I'm already 67. Yeye ana miaka makumi sita na saba. But still, God has great plans for me for years ahead of me, and ahead of now. Lakini ana mwamba mungu aendelea kumpa miaka mingi ili na aendelea kumbiri injili zaidi. And His plan is wonderful. Na mipango za mungu ni zaki acha. Do you believe His plan is wonderful for you? Je, una amiri kwamba mpango wa mungu ni wajja mu maisha ni mwako? Hallelujah. So my motivation is I want to follow God's plan. Kwa hivyo yeye kinachomchochea ni kwamba anataka kufuata mpango wa Mungu kabisa. I don't want to lose any part of this wonderful plan. Yaani hataki kupoteza sehemu hata kidogo ya mpango huu kabambe wa Mungu. So that's my motivation to not to sin at all. Sasa hiyo ndio inayomchochea ili asitende dhambi wakati wote. Now, 
In this few days, I will also talk about how to overcome all sins. Na sasa katika hizi siku chache ambazo zimebaki tutazungumza jinsi ya kushinda dhambi. It's possible to stop the sin as soon as we have sinful thoughts. Yaani ni rahisi sana kusimamisha usitende dhambi wakati unapokuwa na mawazo ya kidhambi. I stop my sins when any sinful thought comes up in my mind. Yeye huwa anasimamisha dhambi anapoanza kuwa na mawazo kinyume. Because I have the motivation to follow the the perfect plan of God. Kwa sababu yeye amekwisha kuchochewa kufuata mpango wa kiajabu wa Mungu. Let me ask you this question. Naomba nimuulize swali hili. If one day you hear I'm using a personal illustration. Anatumia tu mfano wa kibinafsi yake yeye mwenyewe. If one day you hear that pastor you cannot serve anymore because he has sinned. He has a committed a serious sin. Kama kutakuwepo siku usikie kwamba mchungaji huyu hawezi kufanya huduma kwa sababu ametenda dhambi. Would you feel very bad about that? Je, utasikia vibaya ama vizuri? Vibaya sana. Very bad. Yeah. How about you? Na je wewe, if you have committed some serious sin, kama umetenda dhambi ambazo zina uzito kabisa, and cannot serve God anymore, na sasa hauwezi ukamtumikia Mungu. Would you feel bad about it? Utasikia vizuri ama vibaya? Yes. So then we want to keep the perfect plan. We want to enter God's perfect plan. So we have the motivation to, you know, to avoid all sins and overcome all sins as soon as they show up in my mind. Now this is a motivation for more mature Christians. Lakini hapa hapa mtu anayeweza kuchochewa ni yule Mkristo ambaye amekomaa katika ukufu. But we should tell all Christians that. Lakini lazima pia tuwasaidie Wakristo wote. God is a wonderful plan for your life. Na tuambie kwamba Mungu anao mpango mzuri maisha ni mwako. Don't lose the plan by sinning. Kwa hivyo usipoteze ule mpango wa Mungu kwa sababu ya dhambi. Now to motivate people not to sin by the law is like this. Na sasa kuachia watu wasitende dhambi kutumia sheria huko namna hivi. If we sin as in men are in John chapter 5 verse 14. John 5. Tunapofanya dhambi kwa mfano katika kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 5 na mstari wa 15. Don't sin anymore lest the worst thing will happen to you. Usitende dhambi tena manake kama utarudia kutenda dhambi mambo mabaya zaidi yatakufanyikia. So if a person continue to sin kwa hivyo mtu anapoendelea kutenda dhambi he will give a foothold to the devil yeye basi atampa shetani nafasi ya kuingia maishani mwake and bad things and worse things will happen to him na vitu vibaya na viovu kabisa mambo mabaya yatamtendekea so these are warnings kwa hivyo hili ni kama onyo and also Paul said that he who sows to the flesh will reap destruction Aha basi yule anayepanda katika ubaya pia atavuna katika uharibifu. So if a person continues sin, kwa hivyo mtu anapoendelea kutenda dhambi, he will face destruction of his whole life. Yeye atakutana na uharibifu wa maisha yake yote. He will face destruction of his spiritual life, atapokea kuharibiwa maisha yake ya kiroho yote. Destruction of his marriage, maharibika katika ndoa yake destruction of his future na hata siku zake za hatima zitaharibiwa and the worst destruction is na sasa kuharibika ambako ni kubaya zaidi ni eternal punishment in hell ya kwamba utaenda kupata kuadhibiwa vibaya katika jehanamu ya milele so the worst thing that can happen to somebody who, who continues sin is that he can lose salvation and go to hell. Na sasa kitu kibaya ambacho kinaweza kufanyika katika maisha ya Kristo ni kwamba anapotenda dhambi, anaanguka kutoka kwenye wokovu na sasa ataenda katika jehanamu moto usioisha. I hope you have the motivation and say God's plan is so wonderful therefore I don't want to sin. Na nataka kuamini kwamba utakuwa na kitu cha kuchochea useme kwamba sitaki kutoka katika mpango wa Mungu. It's not just a fear to go to hell. Ya kwamba usio tu ni uoga tu kwamba hautaenda jehanamu. That is the most basic motivation. Yaani hilo ni jambo ambalo linakuchochea tu la kimsingi. The higher motivation 
Lakini lili neno kuchochea na hali ya juu is God's love is so great. Ni kwamba upendo wa Mungu ni mkubwa zaidi. I don't want to make God unhappy by sinning. Na sitaki kumkasirisha Mungu kwa sababu ya kutenda dhambi. I don't have, I don't want to destroy the relationship with God by sinning. Na sitaki basi nikaribu uhusiano wangu na Mungu kwa sababu ya dhambi. I want a close relationship with him. Nataka uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. So I want to love God and obey him in every way. Kwa hivyo ni lazima umtii Mungu na umfuate katika kila njia zote. Now do you understand this motivation by the grace and by the law? The motivation by the grace of God and by the law. Je, sasa unaweza kuelewa jinsi unavyochochewa na neema ama uchochewe na sheria? The motivation by grace actually should be for all Christians to know that God has many good things planned for us. Kuchochewa kunakotokana na neema ni kwamba lazima Mkristo ajue Mungu anazo baraka nyingi zote kwa ajili yetu sisi. So when we follow God faithfully, we'll have all these blessings. Kwa hivyo tunapomfuata Mungu katika njia ya uaminifu hizi baraka tutazipokea. But there are many Christians who are very lazy. Lakini kuna wakristo ambao ni wazembe, wavivu. Want to sin. Yaani wao wangelipenda to appreciate God's love. Hawataki basi ku hawataki ku kushukuru kwa sababu ya upendo wa Mungu. All Christians should know the warning from the Bible. Yaani wakristo tunawapasa wajue yale maonyo yaliyo katika Biblia. When a person doesn't pray, when a person doesn't obey God, when a person sins, mtu asipoomba, mtu asipomtii Mungu tunapotenda dhambi, he can lose his salvation. Anaweza kupoteza ukufu wake. All Christians should have this in mind. Yaani wakristo wote tunaomba wakuwe na mambo haya katika mawazo yao. But for mature Christians, lakini kwa mkristo ambaye amekoma, my motivation is not just not to lose salvation. Basi mchi wangu wake sio kwamba atapoteza wokovu tu. Of course I don't want to lose my salvation. Ijapokuwa sitaki kupoteza wokovu wangu. But the main motivation for me is lakini kile ambacho kinanichochea cha msingi ni God is so good. Mungu ni mwema. God is full of love. Mungu amejawa na upendo. I want to be strengthened by God's love. Nataka kutiwa nguvu kwa upendo wa Mungu. I want to enjoy his love. Nataka kudunda upendo wa Mungu. I want to obey him in every way. Nataka nimtii katika kila njia. I use a human illustration. Anatumia mfano wa kibinadamu. Two persons are married. Watu wawili ambao wameoana. Now if the relationship is good. Kama ule uhusiano wao uko mzuri. The motivation would be kile ambacho kitawachochea ni you have such a wonderful spouse. Ha, uko basi na ume ama mke ambaye ni wa kiajabu. If you don't treat him or her nicely, kama hautamfanyia mambo mazuri, ukamtunze vyema. You will have a very good marriage. Hautakuwa na ndoa ambayo ni nzuri. And you will have very good children. Na sasa hamtakuwa hata na watoto wazuri. And if you want a good marriage and good children, na kama ungelipenda basi kupata watoto wazuri na ndoa nzuri, love your spouse. Ni lazima mke akampende mume na mume ampende mke. And you can enjoy each other. Na mnaweza basi kusherekea kila mmoja. And enjoy the blessing from each other. Na mnaweza kusherekea baraka zitokazo kila mmoja. Now but then for couples who who have problem in the relationship na sasa wale ambao katika ndoa zao kuna matatizo na shida na misukosuko they will need a motivation from the law wao watahitaji kutochewa kutokana na sheria if you continue to disregard your spouse unapoendelea kutomtii yule mpenzi wako you could end up with a divorce inawezekana hiyo ndoa basi kutapeana talaka and bad things will happen to your children na sasa mkisha achana watoto ndio watakayoumia and you suffer greatly na sasa watoto wataumia zaidi so there is a motivation from the law yani hiyo sasa ni kuchochewa kunaotokana na sheria can you tell the difference Naweza kuona utofauti sasa? Motivation from grace and motivation from the law. Kule kuchochewa kunakotokana na neema na kule kuchochewa kutokana na is Jeremiah is very important that you understand it. if you don't understand you ask me. Ni vizuri uelewe mambo haya. Kama unaona yanakulemea jamani tafadhali uliza mwambie rudia hapo sijaelewa. I'm saying God has a wonderful plan for each one of us. Ninasema Mungu anao mpango mzuri katika maisha ya kila mmoja. One day when you go to heaven, siku moja utakapokwenda kule mbinguni, you see the God, you see God's plan for your life originally. 
utaona mpango wa originali wa Mungu maishani mwako his plan will be wonderful for each person na mpango wake utakuwa mzuri kwa kila mmoja that you can enjoy God ya kwamba unaweza ukabudika Mungu you have all kinds of blessings utakuwa na baraka zote and you can be used by God to bless many people na unaweza Mungu anaweza kutumia ili na ukabariki watu wengine your life will go higher and higher maisha yako yataenda juu na juu zaidi that is the perfect plan of God for every person huo ni mpango mzuri wa Mungu kwa kila mmoja Would God plan that someone always have failure? Would, would God have a plan like this? Jeni Mungu anaweza kuwa na mpango ya kwamba kila mtu asiwe mtu wa kufanikiwa? No, he would not plan bad things for you. He will plan good things for you. Mungu hawezi akupangia mambo mabaya, atakupangia mambo mazuri. So the motivation by the love and grace of God is like this. Kwa hivyo sasa kule kuchochewa kunaotokana na upendo wa Mungu ni hivi. He has all kinds of blessings for us. Ana baraka zote kwa ajili yetu. If we love God and obey him and serve him, kama tutamtii Mungu alafu tumtumikie Mungu, our life will go higher and higher. Maisha yetu yataenda juu na juu zaidi. And we'll enter God's perfect plan. Na tutaingia katika mpango mzuri wa Mungu. And you never regret. Na wewe hautawahi juta. And you say my life is so wonderful. Na utasema kwamba maisha yangu ni mazuri kabisa. Just like now. My, I say my life is wonderful now. Kama vile yeye sasa hivi anasema kwamba maisha yake ni mazuri kabisa. So that's motivation by the grace of God. Hapo ina maana kwamba amechochewa na neema ya Mungu. Which is a very positive motivation and powerful motivation. Ambayo ndio ndicho kichochezi ambacho ni cha nguvu na cha muhimu zaidi. But for many people they don't think enough about God's love. Lakini watu wengi huwa wanakaa lakini hawafikiri kuhusu upendo. They, they don't believe in God's love and grace. Na hata hawaamini katika upendo na neema ya Mungu. We need also the law of God to motivate them. Tunahitaji tu tunahitaji pia sheria ya Mungu ili naye hao watu wako hao wakachochewe. Actually all Christians including ministers need the motivation from the grace of God and the law. Kwa kweli wa Kristo wote na hata watumishi wa Mungu wote wanahitaji kuchochewa kunakotokana na sheria na neema ya Mungu. But for the true Christian who already loves the Lord they need more motivation from the love of God. Lakini kwa wale wa Kristo ambao wamekwisha kukomaa katika mambo ya wokovu wanahitaji kuchochewa kutoka nao na upendo wa Mungu. But for Christians who are lazy and are sitting all the time, lakini kwa ile Mkristo ambaye ni mzembe ambaye ni mvivu hutenda dhambi kila siku, we need to tell them tunahitaji tuambie first God loves you ya kwamba Mungu anakupenda. He has a wonderful plan for your life. Anao mpango mzuri kwa maisha yako. Do you want to enter this wonderful plan? Ungelipenda kuingia katika huu mpango? So he needs a motivation from the love of God. Anahitaji kuchochewa kunaotokana na upendo wa Mungu. He also needs a motivation from the law. Anahitaji pia kuchochewa kutokana nako na sheria. Do you know that if you continue live like this? Unajua kama utaendelea kuishi You can lose your salvation. Unaweza kupoteza maisha yako kwa You can end up in hell. Unaweza kwenda jehanamu. And your whole life will suffer. Na maisha yako yote basi yatakuwa na matatizo. This is a motivation by the law. Yaani hapo sasa umechochewa kutokana na sheria. And also will destroy every area of your life. Na sasa hiyo itaharibu kila sehemu zote za maisha yako. But we don't use this motivation of the law all the time. Lakini hatufai kutumia kuchochea kutumia uh, kuchochea watu kutumia njia ya sheria kila wakati. We use the motivation of the grace of God and love of God more. Tunahitaji kuchochewa kunaotokana na upendo wa Mungu na neema ya Mungu zaidi. To tell people God loves you, kuambia watu Mungu anakupenda. God wants to bless you. Mungu anataka kukubariki. Do you believe that God is almighty to bless you? Je, unaamini kwamba Mungu ni mkuu anako tayari kukubariki? So you want your life to go higher. Sasa hapo unataka maisha yako yaende juu zaidi. But if people don't listen, lakini watu hawasikilizi. Where do you tell them? Tunafaa tuambie if they continue sin. Kama wataendelea kudumu katika dhambi, the worst thing will happen to you. Mambo mabaya yatawafanyikia. But we don't use the motivation of the law all the time. Lakini hatutumii kuchochea kwa sheria kila wakati. If every sermon you say, okay, you don't obey God, you go to hell, you know. Na sasa kama mtumishi kama atakuwa anaambia kila mtu ya kwamba kama hautafanya vizuri utaenda jehanamu. That is a negative motivation. Hapo unachochewa ni kuchochea kutoka nako na kinyume. It's like a parent, the parents. 
We should tell the children, I love you, I care about you. When you obey me, then we have a good family. The parents won't say to the children, if you don't obey, I'll keep you out from the family. That's a motivation from the law. For instance, if a child is doing bad things all the time in the family, we have to warn them. If you continue to live like that, we cannot allow you to live here. But we don't say that every day. Can you see the difference? But all Christians should know the warning from the Bible. When we don't pray, when we don't obey God, when we don't love God or serve God, we can lose salvation. We are not saved by doing good. We are saved by the grace of God, by the salvation of Jesus. And everyone who is saved will obey God and love God and serve God. Okay, so... We are we are always hold on to the love of God. But we should all be reminded of the consequences of sin. Now I want to tell you one thing I noticed in some countries in some pastors. I noticed that some pastors, because of the poverty in the church and in the country, they when they invite speakers from outside, they would they would say, okay, we need a large amount of money and give us a large amount of money. For instance, if they know someone from America, they would request a higher amount. But the money really doesn't go all to the meetings. It could go to helping the church. It could go to helping the pastor himself. Now, when someone does something like this, he can be lying to God and lying to the Holy Spirit. He can have serious consequences. God will be unhappy. God can punish the pastor and the church. And even some pastors. They try to get money all the time for themselves, they can lose salvation. I've heard one person told me the pastor has received a large amount of money to build a church. But the pastor never built the church. When I heard this, I feel sad. Because the pastor took the money, if he did keep it for himself, he can lose his salvation. So this is the warning by the law. Now, if the pastor say to the outside speakers, you know, we are we have a lot of financial difficulties. I need this amount for the meetings. 
Nahitaji pesa hizi kwa sababu ya mkutano and I would appreciate if you can donate some sort of amount for our church or for our ministry. Na pia ningefurahia ningekuomba kama una uwezo pia utusaidie na hela kidogo kwa sababu ya kanisa letu. If you say out honestly it is good. It's great. Akisema hivyo ina maana kwamba ameweka mambo yake wazi ni vizuri kabisa. And it's up to the speaker who counts whether he can afford to help. Na sasa itakuwa tu na uwezekano kama lile mhubiri anayekuja ako na uwezo wa kufanya mambo hayo. I'm saying people can do dishonest things for money. Ninasema watu wanaweza kufanya mambo mabaya kwa sababu ya pesa. And we need a reminder from the law we cannot do things like that. Na inafaa watu kama hao tuwakumbushe kwa njia ya sheria tuambie hatuwezi kufanya mambo kama hayo. Now this is motivation from the law. Sasa hapa umechochewa kutokana na sheria. Also warning from the law. Na pia haya ni maonyo yatokanayo na sheria. Okay. Okay. Now do you understand any question here? Because this is very important part. I need your I need, need to make sure that you understand. Tunaelewana manake hii ni sehemu muhimu kabisa. Najua kama kuna mtu ako na swali. Nashukuru. He is asking a question. There is an illustration you gave saying that a, a parent can chase away a child from the family. Shetani na shindwa sasa tapitia kwa watoto. Ili ndio kitu nataka ulisie. Shetani na shindwa kuwe na mzazi, we mzazi, sasa kuna mtoto mwenye tapitia kusudi, aaribishie ile hudumu nafanya. Sasa swali ni gani? Sasa swali ni kusema huyu mtoto yuko mjamaa. Lakini sasa kuko barafiki wengine wenyewe bana mshiriki ni watoto kabisa wa tuseme babaya zaidi. Sasa bali watoto sawa nafika pale kujama pia. Mimi sasa bali mtumishi. Nikisema watoto sitaki niwaone hapa kwa mpango ya bao kwangu sababu ya zile tabia. Sije kama nayo inaweza kuwa ni. Jamaa, sijauliza, sijasikia swali. Ya alisema hivi. Sasa ni fatu. Sasa bali mchungaji. Ni mtumishi. Ah, kama mtoto anaangika, mtoto anaangika mchana. Unaweza fanya yule yeye sasa sasa kusudi kama ndio kondo bila mtoto. Sasa ni kuti bila wazazi, lakini mtoto ana anaridhika. Sasa anaweza fanya yeye kutoa mchungaji. Kufuatana na mafundisho. Jua alisema hili. Mimi nilifuata mafundisho mzuri. Ndio nasema mtoto. Alisema mtoto usimwambie na kutosha tumia jamaa. Yes, I'm talking about dress and look. I can say, my daughter. So you can't tell the child that I'm gonna chase you away from home. Now, if I just answer this part, if the question is about this, I'll answer that. Don't know you don't need to hear it at the IGB. So he hasn't finished it. Okay. Yeah. So you just say that you need to say that you are not a child. So, for example, so so the question now, this child belongs to who? Lakini kuna marafiki sasa marafiki babaya wanafika pale kumpango wanakuja kuko nataka mwingia maelezo. Yeah, but he's got a, he has got the bad friends around me and they are running home. Usamii kama mtumishi nikiwaambia wale watoto sitaki nikuwe na waona kwangu kwa nyumba sababu So have has a just leader. If I tell those are friend of my kids not to be here, you chase them away. Is it good or bad? That is what she yeah, yes. No, no. To chase his friends who are coming home. So it is good or bad? Okay. 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 My answer to that is, if the friends are bad, if we can find ways to chase away the friends, it's good. If if we can find a way. Basi, kama hawa marafiki wa mtoto ni wabaya, na tunaweza kupata njia jinsi ya kuwafukuza, ni vyema tuwafukuze, 
but but it's more important to guide the children to know why these friends are having bad influences on him. Lakini ni lazima uwe kama mzazi ni jukumu lako pia kujaribu kutafute uone ni kwa nini hao marafiki wa mtoto wanawaza wanamfundisha mambo mabaya mtoto wao. So he has a motivation to you know not to have relationship with his friends. Ili kwamba ukamsaidie huyu mwanao asiwe na uhusiano na wale watoto wengine ambao ni wabaya. So this is guiding the child to understand that. Yaani hii sasa wewe kama mzazi unafaa umwelekeze na kufundisha mwanao ili aelewe. Now when I talk about the illustration of picking a child away from home, I'm saying something like this. Na sasa kama nitazungumza ama niongee kuhusu kumfukuza mtoto kwenye familia nitatumia hii lugha. If a child keeps stealing money from the home, kwa mfano mtoto kazi yake ni kuiba pesa nyumbani. Or beating the mother ama mtoto huyu anamchapa mamake or beating the brothers and sisters ama huyu mtoto anachapa eh, watoto wao wadogo na dadake na ndugu zake wadogo or even breaking the sister ama kuna uwezekano upate mtoto anambaka hata dadake mdogo when there's something serious like that kama basi ni jambo ama ni jambo ndio kana uzito kama huo you want the child he doesn't listen na umejaribu kumzungumzia huyu mtu na hamekataa kuelewa they can come to a point that we kick him out of the house sasa hapo inafika viwango ambavyo huyu mtoto tumfukuze ije nyumba but this is not our first action lakini hiyo sio ya kwanza kufanya with god too with god too hata kwa mungu ni hivyo he doesn't kick us out from the kingdom of god sio kwamba mungu anatufukuza kutoka kwenye ufalme wake it's only when we continue to sin and don't repent and then This person will be kicked out from the kingdom of God. Basi unaweza tukufukuzwa katika ufalme wa Mungu kama utaendelea kutenda dhambi na umekataa kuutubu na unadumu katika dhambi kila wakati. My main question for you is do you understand the motivation from the love and grace of God and the motivation from the law? That means this are warning, the warning from the law. Do you understand the differences? Swali langu ni hili, je, umeelewa utofauti ulioko? kati ya kuchochewa na sheria na kati ya kuchochewa na upendo na neema ya Mungu himself he says himself understood okay so let me more understand how many more understand you really understand it you raise your hand basi kama umeelewa utofauti naomba ukaingie mkono wako now for those who don't understand you can still ask i will explain more before i go on wale ambao bado hamjaelewa Unaweza tu kuuliza aendelee kueleza kabla hajaenda kukacha. Hajaenda kufundisha kitu kingine. Okay, any more question? Je, kuna swali lingine? Okay. I want to say this. The warning, the motivation from the law sometimes is not just losing salvation. Sometimes is losing blessings. Aha. Basi yale maonyo yanayotokana na sheria sio kwamba utapoteza tu wokovu lakini unaweza kupoteza na upoteze hata baraka za Mungu. Sometimes it could be a punishment from God. Wakati mwingine inaweza kuwa ni adhabu inayotoka kwa Mungu. Or the person will be chastised by God, disciplined by God. Ama Mungu anaweza kuadhibiwa na Mungu. Mtu anaweza kuadhibiwa na Mungu. What I'm saying on the first day we said We should be motivated by the love of God more. Kile kitu nimesema cha msingi ni kwamba inafaa kama Mkristo kuchochewa na upendo na neema ya Mungu zaidi. Every day when we wake up. Every day when we wake up. Kila asubuhi unapoamka, we need the motivation from the grace of God. Unahitaji kuchochewa kunaotoka kwa neema ya Mungu. Every day when we wake up we say kila asubuhi unapoamka unasema God is loving me. Mungu unanipenda. God is a wonderful plan for my life. Mungu unao mpango mzuri ndani ya maisha yangu. And God can use me today. Na Mungu anaweza kunitumia leo. Whatever I do for God, God is very happy. Chochote ninachofanya kwa Mungu Mungu anafurahia. So these are the motivation from the love and grace of God. Yaani hapa umechochewa kutokana na upendo na neema ya Mungu. When we wake up we should not be using the law to to motivate us. Basi unapoamka asubuhi usishawishike na sheria ili ikuchochee. For instance, we don't want to say if I don't obey God, God will punish me. Kwa mfano naweza kuamka na useme kwamba nisipomtii Mungu Mungu ataniadhibu. If I don't obey God, God is not happy with me. Kama sitamtii Mungu Mungu hatakuwa na furaha nani. If I don't obey God, bad things will happen to me. Kama sitamtii Mungu mambo mabaya yatatendekea. You understand we don't motivate with the law every day. Unaelewa sio kwamba inafaa 
kuchochewa na sheria kila wakati. Is for warning. Yaani sheria ni ya kutupa maonyo tu. If people use the law too much on themselves, kama watu watatumia sheria sana, every day they have fear. Kila siku watakuwa na uoga. Did I do something bad? God will punish me. Na kama nitafanya kitu kibaya, Mungu ataniadhibu. I have sickness because God is punishing me. Aha, mimi ni mgonjwa kwa sababu Mungu ameniadhibu. And then they will always have fear. Na sasa watakuwa na uoga kila wakati. And also I want to say this, this is a very important point. You can write this down. It is not hard to please God. Na hii pia, hiki pengele cha muhimu. Nataka pia uandike chini. Useme kwamba, ni raisi kumpendeza mungu. Now some people say, it is very hard to please God. Watu wengine utasema, hey, ni vigumu kumpendeza mungu. God's standard is very high. Ya kwamba mungu mawazo yake ni ajuu zaidi. It's too hard to reach his standard. Na sasa ni vigumu kufikia mungu wa kwa juu zaidi. I cannot obey God in every area. Siwezi ni kamutifu mungu katika njia zote. That way they have fear. Hapo inamanisa kwa mba unawoga. But when Jesus talked to us, lakini Yesu anapo zumuza na sisi, He said there are two men who go to the temple to pray. Anasema kwa mba wawili wataka poenda kanisani kusari. There was a Pharisee and a publican, a sinner. Kulikuwa na mfaisana na tukawa na mtaifa fulani mtinadami. And then the the Pharisee was very proud. Na sasa yule mfarisaya wakawa na kiburi na majivuno. And the tax collector was very humble to repent. Na yule mtosha uzuku shuru akawa mtu wa kunyekea katika toba. Now the tax collector has many sins. Huyu mtu za ushuru hako na dhambi nyingi. But when he repents. Lakini alipo tubu. Then Jesus said he's more righteous in front of God. Yesu wakamuambia kwamba huyu ameyasabiwa haki mbele za Mungu. So when we cannot follow God's commandment, we repent. God is very happy. Kwa hivyo kama kuna wakati tujafuata sheria ya Mungu, alafu tunatubu, Mungu anafurahia. And then whenever we pray sincerely, God is happy when we come close to him, he'll come close to us. Na sasa tunapoomba katika unyekevu na haki, Mungu anasonga karibu na sisi. And then when we serve God even when we give a cup of cold water. Na kwa mfano wa wakati unamaanisha unaposema kwamba God is very happy with us and he will remember it and he will reward us. Mungu anafuraha na atakumbuka na pia atakupa thawabu. So I'm saying if we're not doing well enough, we ask God to forgive, God is very happy. Kwa hivyo unapofanya vibaya, unamuomba Mungu na Mungu naye anakusamea na kuesabia haki. When we pray with a sincere heart, God is very happy. Unapoomba katika moyo mchungu kunjufu Mungu anakuwa na furaha. When we serve God even a little thing we do God is very happy. Na pia tunapomtumikia Mungu kufanya vitu vidogo vidogo Mungu anafurahi. We can go higher and higher to reach you know to be closer to God. Tunaweza kwenda to a standard. Tunaweza kwenda juu juu na zaidi tuwe karibu na Mungu. But even when we're not good enough lakini wakati ya papo sisi atufanyi viema zaidi. God still accepts us. Mungu ndiyo anatukubali. But we ask him to forgive us. Tunapo muomba kusamaha. So every day we can say, Kila wakati unaweza kusema, Whatever I do for God, God is very happy. Chochote nacho mfanyi ya Mungu, Mungu anakuwa na furaha. I can enjoy serving God. Inaweza basi kuburudika ni kumtumikia Mungu. Even though my church is small, I can still enjoy serving God. Ijapo kuwa hata kanisa lako ni mdogo zaidi, unaweza kumtumikia Mungu. Even when I'm not perfect, I can still enjoy serving. Hata kama wewe si mkamilifu zaidi unaweza kuburudika Mungu. But many ministers they punish themselves by saying, lakini wa wa huduma wengi huwa wanajiadhimu kwa kusema, you're not doing well enough. Wewe haufanyi vizuri vya kutosha. Your church is not growing. Na hata kanisa lako halipanuki. You're not a good minister. Kwa hivyo wewe si muhudumu mzuri. We have to realize that is using the law. Inafaa tukundue kwa mba hapa tunatumia sheria Na hiyo basi itatushusha moyo And also, many people talk to Christians like this Na hata watu wengi wanazungumuza kwa kuristo wa kitumia jia hini You're not doing well enough We have fanyi vizuri ya kutosha You're not praying enough We have umombi ya kutosha You're not serving God enough We have umombi mungu ya kutosha It's always telling them how much they have not done Yani hapa unawambia ni vipi ambavi hawajafanya vizuri That would discourage people Yani hapo basi unawashusha watu moyo. Instead we should tell them whatever they do God is very happy and I'm happy. Badala hivyo inafaa tuambie chochote unachofanya Mungu anafurahia. The motivation by the law is solely for people when they don't realize the consequence of sins. 
Aha, kuchochewa kunao tukana sheria ni kwa watu ambao wamekataa kumti na kumsikiliza mungu. But all Christians should know the warning of the law. Lakini wa Kristo wote lazima wajue maonyo ya nao tukana sheria. Okay, any question do you understand? Kuna mtu bado wa kuna swali? Ama kuna mali ujaelewa? Come to the mic. Chukua kipa za sauti. When you have a question, always rush to the mic. Ni mzele mungu tulo wali akezi. Mwari mwito wana kufunza kuhusu gema ya mungu. Our teacher is teaching us about the grace of God. Sheria ya mungu. And the law of God. Tasa sijue sheria ya wanadabu. Ida kuwa na fasi ya nipale. Na kama nasema sheria ya wanadabu. Ni kuhusu katiba ya inchi. Sao na fikiri kama katiba ya inchi nao ni sheria. Ndani mafutisho yetu ile katiba ya inchi na uweza kwa na mfasi kati ndani ya mafutisho yetu. And now because you are talking about the law of God, what will be the place of the law of men? For example, the constitution of the country. What is what will be its place? But this is a different realm. As far as obeying the law of the country, a good citizen would have this motivation. I love DRC, I love Congo. And Congo can become better. Na kongo inaweza kuwa inchi mzuri So I want to obey the law and love this country and bless this country Kwa hivyo nataka nikati shiria na nipende hii inchi na nibariki hii inchi Now the motivation from the law will be like this Sasa kutochewa kuna motoka na shiria kutakuwa hivyo If I don't obey the law I'll be caught by the police and I'll put in jail Kama sita ti shiria ya inchi itakamato na police na niwe kwa gereza I hope your motivation is saying, if I do these good things, I will bless Congo. Nataka ujue kuamba uwe unajichochea ukisema kuamba nikifanya mambo haya mazuri, nitabariki inji ya Congo. Instead of saying, if I do bad things, I will be put in jail. Padale ya kusema kuamba unapo tenda vitu vibaya, utakamato na askari na utiwe baroni. Okay. Can you see that? The motivation in, like in family too. The motivation to love your family members Aha, mfano pia katika familia Kule kuchochewa kwa kupenda wana familia Would be to say that they are precious to me Ni wewe kusima kwamba hawa watu ni wadhamana kwa mgu If I love them and be nice to them Kama ni tawapenda na niwe ni mzuri kwa u We'll all enjoy the family Sisi sote tutafurahia familia And we'll have good children Na tutakuwa na watuto wazuri So that's a motivation for the grace Hapo ni kuchochea na kutokana na neemu Okay um, okay, now, you have any question? Jay, you understand it? Yeah. You understand it? To be any other? Yeah. I want to thank you because of the teachings. You have to thank me because of the teachings. You have to thank me because of the You've been talking about being motivated by the law or being motivated by the grace. My question is this. Wakati neema ilikuwa haiwepo, haiwepo. The time whereby there was no grace. Waagano la kale. In the Old Testament. Akokuwa wokovu wa wale wa Israel. Sorry? Wokovu ikuwepo. Aha, because there was no grace in the Old Testament. Did we have salvation in the house of Israel in the Old Testament? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let me tell you. Uwasha ni kwambie. For all the time in this world, there has always been grace. Katika dunia hii, tangu ilipo anzia, tumekuwa na neema. It's a wrong teaching that Old Testament has no grace. Nifundisho mbaya ama mbofu, mtu kufundisha kwamba katika agano la kare ya kuja kuwa neema. Remember David said that blessed is he whose sins are covered. David said that blessed is he whose sins are covered. Aha, kumbuka mfalme Daudi ya nasema, anaeheni yule ambaye dhamizake zibefunikwa. And then when 
uh, in uh, Exodus chapter 20 when the God gave the Ten Commandments. Katika kitabu cha kutoka sura ya makumi mawili wakati mungu anapo mtumamusa kuchukua amri kumi. God said, I'm the one, the God who take you out of Egypt to save you. Mungu anasema mimi ndiye Bwana ambaye nimewaondoa katika mji wa Misri nikawaokoa. And to bless you na kuwabariki. Therefore obey his commandments. Kwa hivyo mkatii sheria hizi. And in Old Testament when they sin, God gives them a way that they, they can be forgiven. Na sasa katika agano la kale hata walipotenda dhambi, Mungu alikuwa na mpango jinsi ya wao wanaweza kusamehewa. They have to bring an offering, ya kwamba ilifaa walete sadaka, to tell them that there is a, a price to pay to forgive. Kuambia kwamba basi kama ni kuomba msamaha inafaa ulipie gharama. This price was paid by Jesus Christ. Na sasa hii gharama ya mwisho kabisa ilikwisha kulipiwa na Kristo Yesu. Actually in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, haswa sana katika kitabu cha Waebrania sura ya 9, it says that Jesus blood also forgive the people in the Old Testament in the previous testament. Ina maana kwamba Yesu aliwasamehe watu waliokuwa wakaishi wanaishi katika agano lililo the animals cannot forgive people. This animal is, is a, a, you know, a symbol of Jesus Christ who died for us. So actually the power of forgiveness still came from Jesus Christ. And in the Old Testament, so many times the Israelites disobeyed God. Na katika agano na kale, kuna vipindi vingi ambavyo wa Israeli hawaku mti mungu. God still say, I want to save you. Lakini mungu alikona sema, nikelipenda kwa uko. I'm drawing you with my love. Nina wavuta kwa upendo wangu. Why do you want to be per to perish? Mbona munataka kuangamia? Whenever you turn back to me, mnapo ni mbiendi mimi. I will bless you. Can you see the grace of God in Old Testament? Let me tell you, this teaching came from a man called Schofield. He said that in the Old Testament is all the law. You know, in the Old Testament, no one was perfect. They need the forgiveness of God so they can be accepted by God. So they did not please God by obeying the law. They obeyed after they are forgiven by God. It's the same in the New Testament. In the New Testament, we don't need to bring an offering to God to, to be forgiven. We, we say it's a free gift of forgiveness. Now, in the Old Testament, the animal is not a prize for forgiveness. Katika agano jim la kale, wanyama siyo kwa mbani yaliyo kuwa garama ya kusamaha. It's just a symbol that a prize has to be paid by God. Ilikuwa ni ishara tu ya kuonyesha kwa mba dhambis ama ya kuonyesha kwa mba garama yetu italipiwa na mungu mwenyeo. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Pasipukuwa na umwakikaji wa damu, hakuna msamaha wa dhambi. Okay. Now you read through the Old Testament, you can find many passages about the grace and the love of God. Aha, unapo soma zaidi katika agano la kale, utapata kwa mba kuna nehema ya mungu inao jithirisha wazi wazi. Yeah, like Psalm 23, Psalm 103. Zaburi miya moja, ishirina tatu, Zaburi miya moja, ishirini. And there are many other passages. Mistani mingi sana kitibili. Okay, have I answered the question? Ame kusahiria. So in the Old Testament they were taught the law. In the Old Testament they were taught the law. He's not that answer. In the Old Testament they were taught the law. Translate. In the Old Testament they were taught the law. Taught. God taught them. God teach them. Ah. Kwenye agano la kale walifundishwa na mungu kuhusu shiria. But it doesn't mean that the law is what rules them. 
haimaanishi kwamba sheria ndiyo iliyokuwa ikiwatawala it's still they are blessed by the grace of god lakini bado walibarikiwa na neema ya mungu okay i know that this concept has been around for many years and many people thought the old testament is is by obeying that they get the grace of god it's not right it's god give the grace and then they obey it. Aha, na hiyo fundisho hili limekuwa kwa vipindi vingi ya kwamba katika agano la kale kwamba watu waliongo walitawaliwa na sheria lakini watu walikuwa wanatii alafu Mungu anawatawala. Encouragement by the grace and encouragement by the law. Basi maswali swali la leo ni hili. Ni nini kazi ya kuhimiza watu kupitia ni nini maana ya kuhimiza watu kutumia sheria? na ukitumia neema ni nini maana ya kuhimiza watu kutumia sheria ama kutumia neema the answer is this, this morning we are talking about that the encouragement by the grace of by, by God's grace and love and the encouragement by by the law kwa maana asubuhi ya leo tumekuwa tukizungumzia jinsi unaweza kuhimiza watu ukitumia njia ya neema ama ukitumia njia ya sheria Encouragement by the grace is saying God has given us so many good things. Basi eh kuhimiza watu kutumia njia neema ni kusema kwamba Mungu ako na baraka nyingi na anataka kuachilia hizo baraka. Um so we say God is a wonderful plan. Tunasema kwamba Mungu anao mpango mzuri. When we follow God, obey God, tunapomtii Mungu na kumfuata Mungu, all the blessings will come to us. Hizi baraka zote zitakuja kwa maisha yetu and our life will go higher and higher. Na maisha yetu yataenda juu zaidi na zaidi and we can enter God's plan. Na tunaweza kuingia katika mpango wa Mungu. And then encouraged by the law na sasa kuhimiza watu kwa njia ya sheria is telling us the consequences of our uh, consequences if we don't obey what God told us. Hii inatufundisha matokeo ambayo tunaweza kuyapata kama hatutamtii Mungu. When we don't pray, kama hatuombi, when we don't love God, kama hatumpendi Mungu, when we don't obey God, kama hatumtii Mungu. When we don't serve God, kama hatutumikii Mungu, there can be these consequences. Ya kwamba tunaweza kuwa na matokeo haya. First, they cannot receive all the blessings of God. Ya kwamba mtu huyu aliyekataa kumtii na kutumikia Mungu hataweza kupata baraka za Mungu. They will give Satan a foothold. Na sasa watampa shetani nafasi maishani mwao. The plan of God will be destroyed in their life. Mpango wa Mungu katika maisha yao utaharibiwa. And the worst of all, they can lose salvation. Na kubwa sana kwa yote wanaweza kupoteza wokovu. The Bible tells us many consequences we don't obey God. Biblia inatufundisha kuhusu matokeo mengi kama hatumtii Mungu. So the motivation by the law is mainly to tell people the consequences if they don't obey the law. Kuchochewa, kuchochea watu kutumia sheria inawaeleza matokeo ambayo watayapata ambayo ni matokeo mabaya wasipomtii na kumtumikia Mungu. The motivation by the law is more important when people don't obey God. When people don't obey God, we need to tell them the consequences if they don't obey the law. Kama watu wanakataa kumtii Mungu na kufuata sheria ya Mungu, hapo ndipo unaweza kutumia sheria kuwachochea, uambie kwamba watakuwa na matokeo mabaya. But this is not powerful. Lakini hii sio ya nguvu zaidi. If people just motivate themselves with the law, they will have a lot of guilt feeling. Watu kama watuchewa kila wakati kwa njia ya sheria watakuwa watu wa kuhukumika. Motivation by the grace of God, mtu anapochochewa na sheria na neema ya Mungu, will give joy and motivation. Mtu huyo atakuwa na furaha kwa sababu amechochewa kwa furaha. And we can enjoy God. 
na unaweza ukamsherekea Mungu enjoy serving God na utasherekea kutumikia Mungu so the answer, the question is describe motivation by God's grace and motivation by God's law basi swali ni kwamba ueleze jinsi unavyoweza kumchochea Mungu kwa njia ya sheria na jinsi unavyoweza kumchochea mtu kwa njia ya neema we need both kinds we need both kinds tunahitaji yote mbili but we should use the motivation by God's love more lakini kuchochewa kwa njia ya upendo ama neema ya Mungu ndio ikuwe nyingi zaidi okay so that's the question today so that has anyone has anyone uh, written uh, done the homework from yesterday has anyone done the homework from yesterday Je, kuna wale ambao wamekwisha kufanya kazi ambayo tuliwaachia kuanzia juzi? If you have done it, please make sure the name is there and then hand it in to uh to us and then we'll look at it. Basi kama umekwisha kufanya hiyo kazi, hakikisha kwamba umeandika na jina lako vizuri, alafu ulete hayo makaratasi huko mbele, tunataka kwenda tukirudi tukirejea kule tunapokaa tutaanza kupitia makaratasi hayo. Those who finish it will get the certificate. Wale ambao watafanya mitihani zote ndio watakaopokea vieti peke yao. Usifikirie kwamba kwa sababu uliandika jina lako pale chini ni ruhusa ya kupata cheti hamna wale ambao watarudisha mitihani zao. Okay, any question? Je, kuna mtu ako na swali lolote? Okay. Now, um, we go to a new topic now. Tunataka kwanza kujifundisha kitu kipya sasa. Pacific is here. Oh, can you stop this recording and restart it? No, this one. That one, you keep it.